composite, all composite aircraft, all carbon fiber. Well, obviously metal parts, and it is a strutted aircraft. Uh, we have a couple other airplanes on the market that are cantilevered. This one's strutted, but this it's strutted for one really good reason, and we'll look at that later. But here's a hint. Down here, this connection point could be a hint. That'll give you a hint what we're going to talk about in a minute. But first of all, this is the second generation. It's called the GX. Uh, exactly what they meant by that term, I don't know. But the previous one, uh, designed by a very sharp guy in Europe called Lawrence Kraitmeier, uh, built and sold many of the G3 Remos. But when it came time to say, okay, we're now in the American market, we need to do things a little different. We have a light sport now. It's not the European ultralight. There's more we can do. There's more we can add. We've got a little more weight to work with. So let's add the extra stuff. And so let's look back here. I want to point out a couple other things that you see that you don't normally see on an airplane. What would those be for? Well, we're going to go look at that in a minute, why it might have those little silver parts sticking out. But here is a sleek and beautiful airplane. Uh, flies right near the top of the performance category, and uh, we just talked to a fella. I think he's getting ready to buy his third one. Uh, I guess that shows just how much uh, loyalty they have that somebody already has two and is contemplating a third one. Uh, not that he's kept the other two. He's not a flight school or anything. Just likes to have the newest and latest, and they've got some new and great stuff here. Let's go have a look inside and see if we can tell some of those differences. But before we do that, I want to show you what the little puzzle here I was talking about. For that, we need to go toward the front of the airplane. So I, I talked about some parts of the rear. We've also got parts on the front. Now, what would that be for? Is that a pitot tube? Well, no, that's right here. Here's a pitot tube. So that's not a pitot tube. Plus there's one on the other side. That's because this airplane has wings that you can fold and or remove. And so that's the point of the arrangement down here we saw on the strut that can hinge. And that's the point of the two uh, little uh, posts in the back. That's to support the wing when it's in the folded configuration. Now. Folding wings and GA pilots are sort of strange animals. They don't know each other very well. But in the case of light sport, we have a few that fold their wings. And what that means is with this thing folded, you can put 10 of these in the space that you might have only two airplanes with their wings fully extended. So hangar costs uh, are much lower. And just ease of, of maneuvering it around with the wings folded, a pretty straightforward thing to do. But some of the real magic of this airplane is on the inside. So I'll open this door for your camera, and I'll go around the other side. All right, now we're in, it's, it's like it's a new airplane. Well, of course, it is a new airplane, but it's a new model of a new model, if you can take all of those news. Uh, we just opened it up, and, and it has just right at the base. When you go to the door and you crank on the handle, it's not just a little tiny thing you pull out and kind of tinny sounding or whatnot. This is a nice solid clunk as it opens up. I can see where it pins down here, and there's another pin point in the back. Uh, they're right near your camera here. If you can come back just a little bit, you'll see the two pin points. Always good to have one forward. There's actually another one way forward up here on the door. And then there's one toward the back here. And by the three posts on it, that's going to make sure that door stays closed. Now, you can open the doors on this aircraft, but only at slower speed. But that's a cool thing to be able to do for those of us that like open cockpit flying. But speaking of the cockpit now, we just looked at another one. And uh, you can see right away, this has some nice little black accenting here. That's some nice panel work they've done. But here's the thing we were pointing out before for those tall fellows that have knees that bump the panel. See this curvature here? And the fact that this is raised a little bit. I think the other one might be as much as this much lower. I don't know that for a fact, I'm guessing here. But it's quite a bit lower. This now raises it up, refines it. It's also rounded and smooth. So even if you do bump your knee on it, you're not going to come away with a bruise on your knee. The panel is done very nicely. It's divided into three segments. And here they're using the smaller dynons. We often see the great big dynons. And, well, they're wonderful. They're like looking at a big screen TV, and that's fine. But you don't always need that large space. And if you're going to make the panel smaller to make it more user friendly, more accommodating of the human shape, then you need something with a little smaller. But these still show all the same things as the big ones, just in slightly reduced size. So this is the Dynon Skyview, and it's the two installation. So they show these can have uh, uh, synthetic vision, engine gauges, and moving map on one screen, or you can shake them up. You can move things back and forth. It's really uh, quite a versatile piece of equipment. Dynon has been giving training here at Sebring 2012 on how properly to use this. I took one of their courses. Quite amazing. In three and a half hours, I learned a lot. I have more to learn because they're so capable. But no wonder they redesigned this. The Remos people in uh, Passivalk, Germany, redesigned this to not only make it look prettier, nicer, friendlier for the user, but also to accommodate the latest in state-of-the-art equipment. And they've got it. Those two flank the Garmin 796 
Uh, this is their new, and you can see here, there's a little there's kind of a knob here, and I'm not going to do it because I don't want anything to happen. But if you flip that down, the, the idea is then you can pull this out, and it's sort of like your own little aviation kind of iPad, if you will, that you can take into the air, uh, into the hotel or whatever and reprogram the next day's flying, or whatever you choose to do. So generally a very nice layout to this. This is a German-made, German-manufactured airplane. It's not assembled in some other far-off country we don't know about very well. It's done in Germany, which is highly respected for its quality engineering and, and detailed consciousness. And man, this airplane proves it in spades. Two dual joysticks here. We've got uh, dual rubber pedals on it. We do not have toe brakes. We don't need them because we've got a center. I can't even pull this back. I think they've got it locked. But this is the uh, parking brake, and it has a locking feature down here that allows you to pull this back and then hold it in position. There's a new arrangement to the T-section here that we didn't see in the other one. Allows some more of the common switches. And you notice we've got these what, what are called hooded switches. So when you flip these up and you close those down, and then you're not going to accidentally bump off your magnetos. And that's always a good thing. And of course, your throttle, key switch, flap lever. Uh, here's a panel light for dimming and a variety of other switches that are all clearly and cleanly labeled throughout the airplane. Everything is done very nicely. A little lighting up here. So this airplane now has the, it's the GX just like the other one is the GX, but with all these new features on it, it's kind of the next generation, if you will. And so for a while they called it the NXT. So those of you that saw NXT, this is that airplane. Uh, but due to some conflicts with another aviation uh, entrepreneur that used that same set of letters, they've now changed it. So it's the GX. N X E S, as if to say in excess. It's in excess of the other one. That's kind of what they're saying. A little more for your money, I guess. So G X, small N, capital G, capital E, capital S. So the G X N X in excess. I like it. It's it's kind of clever. It's a little bit of a mouthful, but it shows you that they've just done the extra mileage of work. And again, I'm looking at some knobs over here now. If you can pull your camera back, and you've not only got now if you can pull out on, you've got another little lever down here. You just don't see these kind of details everywhere. Throttle here, another throttle here. We just talked about another airplane where I really like to have two throttles on an airplane. Right hand on the stick, left hand on the throttle for both seats. And then of course the brake in the middle. So if we want to get some more information, Dan, where would we go? Pretty easy for this airplane company. It's just remos.com. That's R-E-M-O-S.com. And have you any information on this airplane in your site, Dan? I do. I've uh, flown both the G3 and the GX, and uh, those are both available on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com.